and welcome back. Now we're going to do the forearm and elbow for the instructor of kinesiology, all of which are involved with our good friend the humerus. So we had the proximal humerus, let's look now at the distal humerus. At the distal humerus, and you'll see this picture, you're going to find some knobby features that are worth noting. On the outside, we have what we call lateral epicondyle, then we have a capitulum, which is a big round ball. Now this thing looks like a spool of thread called the trochlea, which literally means pulley. And we have a big knobby medial epicondyle. On your own body, your lateral epicondyle is right here. Medial epicondyle is this ball here. And some might remember that if you tap low enough, you hit an ulnar nerve, which we nicknamed the funny bone. That's right underneath there. So if we attach that to the two distal forearm bones, we see the radius and ulna. Radius will always be lateral, ending up where your thumb is, and the ulna is underneath. He forms the elbow, and when we get to the wrist later, you'll see the radius is going to be the main bone at the wrist. The motions that occur here at the elbow are flexion, extension of the elbow, flexion in, extension out, the frontal plane, and then rotation which is the scap so, <laughs> forearm motion of supination and pronation, in which we move the radius across the ulna like this. And that's happening right here, where the head of the radius rolls across, and you'll notice the ulna stays still, and the radius does all the flipping. So the muscles we name in this unit will either cause flexion and extension, or pronation and supination. There's actually one that does some of each. And we'll start with him. It's probably the muscle you're most familiar with, biceps brachii, two-headed, here and here, muscle of the arm. Biceps brachii is for elbow flexion. He gets all the glory, he's the one that you see most often, but he also does supination. So if your palm is up, you're supinated, he's the one doing the work. And recall from earlier that if I bring my arm down, toward gravity, I'm still using biceps brachii, he's just eccentric now. Concentric, eccentric biceps brachii. There's another guy over here called brachioradialis, along the upper arm, along the radius. This guy is most effective if my hand is in a neutral position, like when I shake hands. If I press here, you'll see him pop up. That's brachioradialis, right there. So his position is flexion with a hand in a neutral position. And then the third really only works if your palm is down. With your palm down, biceps brachii is inactivated, but the guy beneath him, called brachialis, is the one that's the main or prime mover here. Brachialis is this motion. So three elbow flexors, three different positions. So again, you'll see biceps brachii active here, but if I turn my palm down, he goes away. Try that on yourself to see the difference. All extension, which we're best going to see in this position, or even overhead, is done by triceps brachii, a three-headed muscle of the back, which pushes out in that position. So triceps brachii, everything you have to know about extension of the elbow. The rest of it's so easy, it's almost embarrassing. The supination muscles are biceps brachii, as we said, and a little guy called supinator, which makes your palm come up. So supinator and biceps brachii do that. The two pronator muscles, Pronator teres, which is here, crisscross to supinator, and pronator quadratus, which is distal, which flips your palms here. Those are all the muscles and all the motion. All set.